my podcast Hello. and um, would you like to start uh, very simply by introducing yourself and uh, describing what your business is about? Okay, so my name is Sukio and I run a digital marketing agency in Cambridge called Sukio. Mm -hmm. and our main focus is everything to do with content. So we do content strategy, we do uh, lots of content creation like uh, copywriting and social media and video and design and then lots of the training to go with it as well. Fantastic. Okay, how long have you been doing this now? Uh, well, we actually reached our 10th uh, anniversary last June, Ten. which is good. Fantastic. And, uh, and then prior to that, my background is all in, um, in media and publishing and, and that kind of thing as well. So you were a publisher before you were in Well, media. more kind of around content. So um, I actually started out working in radio for a company who make music-based programming for the BBC. And then while I was there, I became editor of the BBC's country music website. So I have this yeah. kind of side knowledge of country music. Um, and uh, became project manager for ITV.com, homepage editor for Yahoo and AOL. And then at that time, I began to build up so much freelance work that I realised, oh, I have a company forming here, and then set up Sukio. Fantastic. Okay. And so you already said a bit about your history. So what is your background when you, so you came out of university, I guess, with a degree, I can't imagine, a classic yeah. degree or something, right? <laughs> Well, it's actually quite a contemporary sort of degree. So I actually studied at Anglia, so just... Yes. Over there, um, yes. over there. My directions aren't quite right. Um, and I did a degree in communication studies with Spanish, okay. and I had a very short stint in uh, what's it, double glazing company for about two months or something. <laughs> and then I saw this ad for this um, job as a production assistant working in this local uh, company which produced radio programs. Right. And so I went for that and applied for that, and thankfully got the job because that back then, you know, set me on the right path, really. Right. But so when you were working for the radio, your job mm -hmm. was not on air, I guess. It was all it about was very, the production. It was very supportive. Um, so I was the PA, it's a very small company, a partnership. Um, one guy in, in Cambridge, we're in his shed in a back garden. Yes. And then another guy um, just outside Manchester in a former sweet shop. And so they were two <laughs> so <laughs> lovely, lovely old buildings. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and so my role was very supportive, kind of a bit of a runner. I would help um, set up interviews. Yeah. I sometimes used to take the, I used to take the weekly show down to Broadcasting House and it was all real to real tape back then. So oh, we'd, wow. we'd cut the thing together, razor blades, tape around our neck, all of that kind of thing. You were actually cutting yeah, tape? Yeah, yeah. So it's oh, interesting because my, my career, I sort of straddled a lot of analog to digital. Mm. So when we first started, it was very much, yeah, it's, you've got these big, um, you know, real to real tape players going so around. these were like the eight or 12 or 16 tracks? They were and... that, that big, the actual mm. tapes that we used to record. So wow. um, the country show on a Wednesday, 57 minutes long, so you've got two reels of tape for that. And then we gradually began to do things with DAT, and then we did things down the line. Yes. And then I the thought of actually physically carrying a radio programme down to the BBC, down to Broadcasting House. You just think, well, that's nuts. But it was Absolutely. cheaper to send me than send a courier. <laughs> wow. But I used to love it anyway, so. Fantastic. So, yeah, okay, so we, we already said you were working there. But, so what you do now is very much uh, around the copyright industry, the yeah, media, yeah, media yeah, production. Yeah. So when was the, the transition into that more? Yeah, um, well, I mean, I, I worked in the radio company for seven years. Um, and at the time, it was all when BBC New Media was coming in. So mm -hmm. if you think about the BBC's background, it's always been radio, yeah. and then TV came in, yeah. and then very, very recently, more of the digital stuff. And so this, for me, whereas other people who'd been BBC producers for years, mm -hmm. they felt a bit kind of, oh, what's this new thing? Yeah. Whereas for me, a lot younger, it was really yes. exciting. Of course. You know, and I started to learn how to put things together, and, and uh, we were busy working out, well, what, what do people want in terms of website content, you know? And so it was a natural, natural move for me when the BBC said, right, we need to have some uh, website uh, content to, to go around the shows that we're making, the specialist music shows, and it was yeah. a natural move for me to do that. So I then moved to running this country music website. I was doing reviews, a couple of reviews a week, features, going out to Nashville, interviewing artists there, um, running competitions, um, doing all the stuff around the, the programming that was going out. And that yes. was going brilliantly, and then the BBC 
decided, actually, no, we're not going to do this anymore. We're going to change the volume of the output. Right. So that left me with a little little issue that I had nowhere else to go in this radio production company because mm -hmm. I was the only one really doing digital, yes. apart from my counterpart up north doing folk. And uh, so then I was made redundant there, but uh, moved quite quickly to ITV.com and then became project manager. So I'd made this definite move into digital and all the stuff that I learned in the early days about quality is what still carries yes. through in everything we do today. So you make an edit in a radio program, um, you know, you realise there's something to do with continuity or some sort of fact in the outside world has mm. changed. You make one tiny little ed edit and we would sit and listen th through to the whole 27 minutes again, again before sending it down to Broadcasting yeah. House. So I've never got this kind of, oh, well, that'll do sort of approach. I'm yeah. always a bit of a stickler for going, no, no, it really doesn't matter. It has matter. to be good, yes. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. All right, fantastic. So this is very exciting because I know you for a long time <laughs> oh. and I knew bits and bobs of your past, but it wasn't uh, in that yeah, depth, yeah. so it's very interesting. Mm. And uh, could you just uh, give me a little background uh, about uh, if there is a, a particular way in which you said, okay, that's the way to go. Was there a particular kind of call, as you want to call it, in the way one day you said, that's the way I want to go? With, with setting up the business? Yes. Um, well, there's, there's quite a pivotal moment, I suppose, which is, so as I was saying, I was made redundant um, from one job and moved from this small kind of family uh, business to then finding myself in um, ITV mm. and this big building on Grayson Road in London where you've got ITN in the basement, Channel 4, ITV and all yeah. of this stuff happening. Um, and I was just feeling that I was getting into the swing of it. I kind of understood what was going on, how everything's working there. Um, when Granada and Carlton merged and then I was made redundant. So it was twice in less than 18 months, which is a bit of a push, bit of a push really, a bit of a kick. Um, and then also in the same week, I realised I was pregnant as well. So <laughs> that was so, your first child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got two now, and that okay. was uh, that was the first one. So, um, so that was what I call an interesting week. Um, and you know, people have said, "Oh, did they make you redundant while you were pregnant?" And to be fair, you know, they didn't know, so that it wasn't anything dodgy like that but um, but that was definitely the push because I felt then you've got this growing digital industry in London there's me in Ely um, you know with a baby oh. trying to think oh oh god um, but as it turned out um, the other thing as well is that it was the height of the recession so I've had a number of people saying to me oh do you think that was wise setting up a business at the height of the recession and the answer is I didn't really have a choice you know, I felt very much like I was kind of trying to claw my way out of this awful situation. And so while I was at ITV and busy trying to go to interviews, being a bit conscious of the bump, yeah, the bump you know, going, yes. and thinking if I tell people I'm pregnant, of course I'm not going to get the job. Oops. But then if I don't tell them, you know, whatever regulations are on paper, when it's just you and an interviewer in a room, hmm. you know, there's lots of things they can say that, you know, oh, she wasn't, it doesn't matter that she was pregnant, but of course she wasn't right for the job. No, exactly. You know, you know. and um, and so, but I, but because of this thing with the recession, I think actually I was in a, in a bizarre uh, set of circumstances in the right place at the right time, mm. because people didn't want to take on the overhead of full-time staff with the national insurance yeah, yeah. and all the other um, HR things and a desk. So there was me saying, well, actually, I can do some freelance work for you. You know, Magic FM, I worked for them, and that was two uh, lots of five hours a week. I just did a Monday and a Thursday yeah. and worked in the morning, dashed over to nursery, picked up one, of the, one or two of the children. Um, then he'd have a nap. I'd carry on working while he was doing that. So um, it definitely teaches you how to be disciplined with your time. <laughs> you mothers working in this way I, I know of you is just yeah uh, sometimes you ask yourself how can you do that you know, just well someone amazing. did say to me once oh you're just sitting in a coffee shop all day and I nearly hit the yeah. roof <laughs> you know yeah. I thought do you, you know how hard I'm person. working because <laughs> I've been working you know till gone midnight on Yahoo yeah. stuff if yeah. there was a yeah. an escalating news story then I was covering the home page so you just stay online yeah. you just carry on covering it until it Listen. kind of dies off you know and so um <laughs> I was always doing that, I was up early in the morning, I was 
juggling three different contracts, but then all of that laid the groundwork for the way things are now. Yeah. You know, because we built up, uh, I built up so many good connections and did good work yeah. that it just, you know, laid the groundwork for that. Yeah, consistency. Mm, mm, yeah, mm, yeah. Mm. yeah, one of the few people that I know in this world, in, in Cambridge, in the networking, that you've been consistently doing this for at least the last 10 years. I yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. that mm. pays back. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Um, obviously, you just mentioned uh, pregnancy, uh, changing and so on. Um, was this decision of going uh, freelancing, uh, was there anything holding you back in this decision? Um, apart from, obviously, you had a lot of push, so there was yeah, uh, not yeah, much yeah. of a choice in, 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 in going down that way. But What, from, from um, yeah, doing freelance work? Not, not really. I think, okay. um, if anything, I got a lot of pleasure out of being still being out there and still working for something yeah. um, instead of things being too cosy so I quite like it I think I think I'm at my best when I've when I'm up against it a bit yeah. and so um, all of that kind of having to push and having to make things work I think was is something that kind of you know drove me on and in a way it's it's not well you know maybe the best thing that happened to me because I think I'm always someone that could have set up a business but I do wonder well actually if I didn't have that push would I have really Absolutely. done it or would I have stayed in um, an environment because as long as I'm still learning and developing mm. then that probably would have given me enough job satisfaction yeah. uh, whether I would have stayed at ITV I don't know yes uh, and also obviously when you first started you were if I understand at the beginning you were just on your own yeah? mm. Mm. then little by little you built up a, yeah. an agency yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's been um, so 10 years now, but the first couple of years of that, it was just me and my own. Yes. So I set up the company, I mean, partly for, for the whole admin reasons of yeah. being able to trade under a company name. Um, and then once the boys started to go to school and nursery, what, what, once I, both, I had the two of them out of the house yes. on a regular basis, then, um, then that's when I got premises. And I found this lovely room over a spa in Ely. Okay. Um, spa as in massage treatments, yes. you know, rather than um, somewhere where you buy newspapers and fags. And um, and then when I moved in there, I, I got two empty desks. Right. And then that helped me focus on trying to fill them with people. Right. But I did do, you know, kind of tentative steps forwards and back. Yes. So um, I've never had any investment, never had any outside no. outside funding. So I've just gradually, gradually, gradually built things up. Organically, yeah. yes. Yeah, but I right. think that has benefited us in the end. You know, we haven't gone like that in terms no. of growth, but it's a lot more solid and steady. Very stable. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, fantastic. Yeah. Yes, I, I love that, yes. Um, do you remember what was the biggest challenge um, in, in this process? It's 10 years now, if you look back at 10 years, what was, was there yeah. one challenge more than... I mean, I, th I think, um, just to get personal for a moment, I mean, when my mum was dying, that was just hell, you know? Yes. And it came in kind of two chunks, really, where she went into, um, into the cancer ward on, in Adam Brooks over the, sort of the springtime. Yeah. And around that, one of my very small team, he left. Mm -hmm. um, and I needed to get somebody on who, onto the team that was more of a, maybe a bit more experienced yeah. and safe pair of hands kind of thing. But then the guy that I took on, um, I ended up having to fire after two weeks because he was, he was just, I don't know if he lied to me during the interview, but he really wasn't as capable as he as you know said. came across. So I had all of that kind of driving to and from Adam Brooks and Mealy all the time and also having to do the work to make up for, you know, so that was very difficult. Money, yes. But then several months later when she, it was in this period where she went into, uh, it was like this eight week, eight, eight week period where she was back on the cancer ward again right. and then um, went into hospice care was just, you know, so traumatic and trying to keep everything going. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, a couple of days before our Christmas party, I was in Arthur Rank Hospice, and I knew there wasn't much long left, but I think you still can't get your head around the fact that this thing is about to happen. Yes. And I was saying, so do you think we should still go ahead with our Christmas party on, on, on Wednesday? You know, and they were looking at me kind of, kind of gone out as if to say, well, are there not more 
well, I don't know, it's, she, she's a bit more understanding than that, really, to be honest. Um, but it was just this feeling that I just had this continual thread all the time, I've got to keep things going, I've got to keep yeah. things going, even while all of this personal stuff was happening as well. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I think in terms of running a business, there's not uh, not many things tougher than that, <laughs> to be yes, honest. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you for that. Very, very touching. Ooh. Um, okay, is there one person who had most influence in your professional life? that you can remember that thanks to him or her? Yeah, I think it's more a series, a series of bosses right. where I've thought, I, I will do it this way or I won't do it that way. You know, yeah. So Nick, in the radio production company, it was a very quirky, creative space. Mm -hmm. And we played a lot of music all the time. Right. You know, and so the company dudes, we'd everyone get, get their guitars out and that kind of thing. And I've tried to carry that through into our current business. So, yeah. um, you know, it's a very creative, lovely, bright and airy sort of space sure. rather than something that feels very office -y. And then Claire, who, um, she was my boss at Yahoo, but then she also, she um, looks after the BBC homepage now. And I, I kind of accidentally kept on following her from... Uh, large media corporation to large media corporation and she taught me the value of giving people straight and fair and honest feedback so yeah. instead of thinking oh I don't know shall I say this will I be upset it's much easier to say okay that picture wasn't right because of this you yes. need to crop it differently next time yeah. you know and there's no judgment made there it's just simply telling people straight yeah so I really try and, and follow, follow that through and then my experience at ITV, I, you know, I think this is like a showcase and how you know, to not do things. So I try and, um, some of the things I learned there, I, I just make sure I don't do that now. Right. Um, about the way that things are very much kind of uh, in silos, if you like, so, and lots of internal politics. You know, I really try and develop a, an environment where we, we don't have that. Yeah. We're not sitting around criticising people or, or I don't yeah. know. I guess it's, it's typical of large corporations, they allow yes. that, and yes. some of the bosses live well in yeah, that yeah, yeah. negativity, and yes. I think uh, many yeah. many people like yourself setting up smaller companies, knowing those mistakes, you, you yes. tend to go back and say, I'm not going to live in that yeah, kind of yeah, environment, yeah. and yeah. therefore you set up a better yeah. working environment. And I think as well, because of what we do, we, we kind of parachute into companies in a way, we yeah. kind of go in, we learn about their yes. copywriting project or we, we learn about their um, what social media channels they need to operate yes. and so we can see straight away all the politics, yeah. we can see how this thing is put together, yeah. we can spot the person who everyone seems to be tiptoeing around and dancing around, you know, yes. and we can spot the people that are um, but there's that phrase radiators and drains. Yes, you know, we yes. can spot the people that are giving out positive yeah, energy absolutely. and then work out how to kind of navigate through all these people. Yeah, so, absolutely. you know, I get inspiration from a lot of places. <laughs> yes. That's one of them. Yes, 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 yes. Um, do you remember in your professional experience one mistake that was more painful than the others? Um, there was one just thinking, I mean, all of my radio stuff is quite a long time ago now, but. Um, one which really, when I think about it now, just think to my, just, um, anyway, I went and did this interview with this country singer called Crystal Gale, mm -hmm. and uh, he did that song, Don't, Don't Make My Brown Eyes Blue, if you know that one. Um, and, uh, and I went to interview her, and I was out in Nashville on my own that week. Wow. And, uh, and then when I came back to the hotel room afterwards, it, the tape was empty. It's completely blank the tape mm. and you just imagine and I was thinking but I, I, I know it recorded but it obviously hadn't and just feeling of oh god, oh god. you know everything it just like your stomach yeah. falls all the way through those different hotel room floors just awful and so I had to ring him up and say look I'm so sorry but um it hasn't recorded for some reason and thankfully I mean she's not exactly in the kind of the early days of her career so she's probably a bit more amenable than other people perhaps to say oh all right go on then yeah yeah, yeah. Well, it wasn't really. like interviewing um I can't think you know Justin Justin Bieber yes. but his people who just say no uh -uh, sorry Absolutely. love and um so I had to you know go back out to this place and sit and do the interview again and all of that it's just so awful and then when I got back to England and uh, and sort of went through all my stuff. I realised that it had recorded, Amazing. and I had um, taken a spare tape with me. So when I got back to the hotel room the first time, I put the blank in the in the thing, and listened to that all the time while the real real recording was there. So it's you know it's one of those 
uh, moments when it, there was a bit of a learning point from it, which is don't just leap to assume that you're wrong about stuff, because, you know, have more trust in your original judgment, your original approach, because actually a lot of the time you are, you are right. Um, and uh, yeah, and I think I was so doubting of my own ability that I just naturally thought, oh no, I've messed up. I messed up. And actually I, I hadn't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is a funny story. <laughs> Okay, is there anything you would like to change in your past in terms of either stuff you've done that obviously are around business that you would have, if you think about that now, you would have not do, or something that you walk, you say, oh, I regret that I could have done and I didn't? Um, I think sometimes with, um, particularly around pricing and that kind of thing, what, what sort of services we were selling in the early days, I think it would have benefited me more to find out what other people were were doing right and so for, for example things like when i started to take on staff i wasn't really increasing the prices to cover my time in managing the project and that kind of thing yes or there's various things around say um copywriting to maybe add on an extra bit where we do tone of voice guidelines or we do more research at the beginning yes. um, i think i wasn't quite uh expansive enough or wasn't making enough suggestions to clients to say well why don't we do this why don't we do that you know so i think a little bit more um of just talking to people and just asking them up front yeah. you know basic questions like well are we delivering the sort of service that you want is yes. there anything more that we can give you yes. um chatting to other people in the community to see how they do it yeah. um is really useful because i'm not client side anymore i'm agency side so i've lost that in this perspective to yes. see how we could be perceived so unless I ask other people um, yes. so yeah so I think a little bit more of that in the early years would have been better um, because then of course you can you can charge more money if you're delivering a bigger service so yes it, and also the fact is obviously the more you add to the same client it is uh, the, the purchasing process becomes easier because the client already trusts you so add an extra service to that client yeah, is a yeah, lot easier yeah. than sell yeah. the same service to a new client that yeah, you have to exactly. go through the sales process all the time yes Yes, yes, yes. Do you remember wh which one has been your proudest moment in all this 10 years of um, freelancing career? I think, uh, in a way, it's not sort of one big moment, but it's more, I really love walking into work every morning. Yes. And if I, if I come in and the place is really kind of humming, I just really love it, you know, and, and our office space is really nice, like I was yes. saying. Um, you know, we've got this, there's lots of space, lots of white walls, we've got these stickers on the walls yes. that have got trees and birds everywhere. Um, and, you know, there's one day last summer, I came in and two of the team were talking about this thing that we're developing uh, called Sukio School, it's online courses. Yes. Um, and they were busy planning some stuff there. We've got an apprentice, he was busy learning, I can't remember, whatever task I set him to do, he was doing it. Yes. Um, someone else was on the phone, there's a video team, they're busy setting something up. Yes. You know, other people just chatting in the kitchen, just having a, just batting some ideas around. And it's one of those kind of quiet moments that isn't to do with winning awards or standing up and shouting about stuff it was just this feeling of oh you know things are things are happening here um and it, there's a friend of mine who we, we also do some work with as well sometimes and she said to me once that whenever she comes there she always gets the feeling that we're moving forward yes you know and that was really nice because sometimes you think it's oh god is, it, is this okay you know are things happening is this going at the right speed is it actually growing so yeah. to get that outside perspective it's just really nice fantastic yes beautiful okay that's fascinating listening to this <laughs> um now you are running an agency you are at the same time in my in my view a freelancer because you you still do some I guess you still I can't talk, contribute yeah. Yeah. to the to the creative work of your clinic. Oh, <laughs> clinic, sorry, I run, <laughs> I run a clinic to your to your agency, and at yeah. the same time, obviously, you are an entrepreneur. You are running. Mm. Your 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 have mm. the business is bigger mm. than yourself. Yes. Is is a lot bigger. So, do you think you you always felt you wanted to be an entrepreneur when you were like? Well, mm -hmm. I think I think so. It, I think I just needed the push to do it. Right. You know, and uh, and I quite. I, I like the fact that it's happened this way because this is the way it's happened for me. And I think it's 
it's easy to look around you and see things like The Apprentice and yes. Dragon's Den yes. and all these very kind of macho, shouty, shouty people. And, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and I'm not like that. And, no. I, and I kind of, I quite like the fact that I'm here doing this thing. Yeah. Um, and it, whereas some people who just get to the forefront by shouting the loudest, yes. then, okay, there's always going to be people like, going to be people like that out there but then you also get people like me coming along and saying well it doesn't have to be done like this no. and in fact I was speaking at, at an event um, last month and these two women gave each other a hug at the end of it when they finished talking um, and I was just talking about running an agency and at, at no point until someone asked me a question um, was I talking about being a woman in business or no. anything about the womanly aspect yes. and they just said it was so refreshing to have a woman standing up talking about just what she's, you know, her skills yes. and all of that instead of doing the woman angle. Yes. So, um, but yeah, to go back to the, back to the question, um, it's, I, I kind of welcome the fact that there are people like me out there doing this mm -hmm. because not everybody has to fit this set mould yes. of what it is to be an entrepreneur. Fantastic. Yes, I, I, I appreciate that. I, I see there are also women that take it uh, as a, you know, they take that position to be a woman as kind of against men rather than, yeah, yeah. well, you know, it doesn't have to be. There. Well, some, yeah, some women, that, that's, they really want to push that forward and make that the forefront, yes, you right. know, which is, which is fine. And, and this is what it's all about, having this mix of different people with different approaches, different angles and all of that, which, Absolutely. you know, I really welcome. Absolutely. Okay. Would you be able to list a few milestones? You already mentioned them slightly at the, at the beginning, literally from leaving your last employment job to Sukio as it is today. I think um, from the point that I walked out of Grazing Road, um, how pregnant was I? Kind of six months pregnant, mm. not really knowing what was going to happen. Yeah. Uh, was quite important in my sort of milestone in my journey. Yes. Getting the office space is very important. Yes. Um, registering the company name, of course, which is all part of um, setting up the company. Yeah. Getting the first employees, very important. But then a big moment really was when I stopped being so reactive and started to become a bit more proactive about what we were offering. Yes. So whereas in the first few years it was very much, right, I need to work, I need to work, you know, you know I'll yeah. do this, I'll yeah. do this for people. After a while I decided to say, yeah, and I started to say, well, no, we're not doing this, no. we are doing this. Um, and even things like saying, okay, well, we won't just manage one Twitter feed, mm. we'll only take you on as a client if we can do Twitter, email marketing, blogging, and three social media channels, for example, exactly. and realising that the size of projects was important to us as well. Yeah. Um, and so we're now in a position where we get lots and lots of work coming in, and, and I can say to people, well, you know, we will work with you, or tell you what, we can't really work no. with your size of project, yeah. but here's three freelancers that we yes. can recommend you to. Um, you know, I've, I don't really like saying to people, no, sorry. So, no. you know, so that moment as well, saying, this is where our service starts and ends. Um, this is the size of companies we work with. Yes. Um, and then the last thing as well, in terms of milestones, was moving into the current office, which yeah. is last, um, it's been a uh, uh, very, very fast, kind of 18 months now. 2017. Yeah, so, um, well, you when know, you that was very was, important. Well, yeah, Christmas 2017, yeah, yeah. it came along. Yeah, yeah. Well, there was like, a well, half yeah. a time creative. So, yeah. <laughs> So that's really helped with the identity of the company yes. and it's helped me as the boss kind of grow into leadership yeah. a bit more because yeah. I've had to make really clear decisions quickly. I've, learned, I've had to learn just how to yeah, manage multiple groups of people, not just my team, yes. contractors, people renting space from us, um, idiot plumbers, <laughs> <laughs> that's another story, um, and, uh, and just you know, push this thing forward and not be not be cowed by people, you know, to, mm. to say, look, you know, I run this place. Just yeah. do what I'm asking you to do, get on with it. I'm but in the nicest possible way. I'm, but I'm no tyrant, but when I ask people to do stuff, I just want them to do yeah, it, you know? No, it's, it's, <laughs> I think there is a bit, feeling all of a sudden that you are in charge. This yeah. is something a lot of us have gone through. You know, you're a junior, then you become a senior. And at some point you say, okay, no, now it's, this is my company. You're running. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah to... exactly. I mean, it's exactly. not just a pure thing like a yeah, selfishness. Yeah. I want to run the company. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like you're in charge. Yeah. Ultimately, the responsibility for everything to work is yours. Yeah, if anything yeah. goes wrong, you are the first person. Exactly, to play. exactly, so, exactly. So, I guess. Yeah, yes. yeah. Um, could you give us, uh, you, you already mentioned a few things, um, 
say I'm a, a I'm running a, co a company and mm -hmm. as I do and I come to you so how would it be the process of you know, you obviously you you can produce content across every media possible yeah yeah so if I come to you and say hi mm -hmm. Sue I would like to work with with your yeah. agency yeah. how how would it go about obviously we, I don't want yeah. the full brief of this <laughs> well um, something yeah. like a copywriting job yeah. um, someone will come to us and they'll say hi I, I'm relaunching my website can you help us with the, yes. the website content I go yes of course and to speed up the process we've got a very simple briefing form on the website right. okay. so I'll give the person that, that to fill in yeah um, and then I'll give them a quote so I've already got ideas in mind about what the size of the job would be yes and then we'll have a kickoff meeting where we go through it in more detail yeah and then we start writing the thing um, we, we tend to ask for a bit of money up front just to, yeah. as a deposit on, on the project um, so that's for a quite straightforward ad hoc kind of copywriting yes yeah. sort of design or something yes. but then when it gets a bit more complex is more of the ongoing work so we might do a lot of strategy yeah. and and what that means for each company can be very different. So sure. some people we just do a quarterly report for them and check in with them. Um, whereas other people, they need a bit of strategy every month where we yeah. report on their progress. They might need us to do some blogging as well, or yeah. some of the ongoing content. Yeah. So, you know, it, it can be, uh, each project is a little bit different. Of course. You know. So I guess you have people that are maybe solopreneurs or small smallish companies. Yeah. But don't, then you have people that have their own marketing manager or the marketing department yeah, yeah, that rely yeah. on you to do yes. certain work. Well, yes. that, that's the type of client we tend to work with nowadays. So yes. it tends to be, say, um, for example, there's um, a company called Cambridge Econometrics just down the road. Yes. So they're a large firm of, of economists. Yes. And then they've got one uh, marketing person. And so we support her yes. doing a lot of the ex extra stuff. Of course. But then that works particularly well because she's in, in the company. Yes. So everybody likes her and trusts her. Yes. We give her the external support. Whereas what we've learned over the years is when companies have said, right, I can't stand social media. Can yeah. you just look after our social media? Yes. You know, or you make it work. Then it never works as no. effectively as it does when you've got somebody on the ground, in the company, yeah. eyes and ears, yes. trusted by everybody. Yeah. Um, so we try and veer away from that. Yeah. And in fact, if anyone comes to me and says, "Ugh, you know, I hate Twitter, just take it off my hands, yes. then I, I tend to walk away nowadays yes. because you need them to believe in it. Yeah. Otherwise, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And also, if it doesn't work, they blame you. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Because they yeah. say, well, I told you it didn't work, I didn't yeah. believe in it. Now yeah. we try, we tested it, so yeah. sometimes. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's, it's great when you can work with and, and working mm -hmm. maybe with a marketing person or marketing department yeah. who actually understand what you do because yes. some of them are yeah. doing marketing without understanding much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been, yeah. I've been <laughs> in that situation <laughs> so for us, the, when the, I was working previously. The, um, so. the bond with the client is very important for us. You yes. know, and, and quite often we are working with someone that feels a bit isolated. Yes. So maybe people at, uh, at the university, yes. then they've got all of these academics around them mm. who want things to be done in a certain way. Um, you know, the university has been going for 800 years. There's ways yes. that they have of doing they things. They still do things. So we help support that person and help them do their job even better, really. That's great. Thank you. Um, do, you know, uh, do you think, personally, um, that uh, more people should uh, become entrepreneurs and set up their own business? Um, yes and no, really. There's, um, on, inter on sorry, International Women's Day, um, that was on Friday, I did see someone tweet to say, actually, can we just have a shout out for all the amazing women out there who just go to work every day and do a great job, you know, rather than saying that everyone has to be um, an Olympic athlete and has no, to be an entrepreneur and stuff like that. So I, I personally, I don't know if there should be more entrepreneurs, but I think there should be a different mix of entrepreneurs. You know, there's, I generally, anyone that puts entrepreneur in their bio on Twitter, for example, I kind of think, yeah, I bet you're not, though, are you? You know, a lot of people, they bandy the term around, yeah. but the ones who are the true entrepreneurs and who set up lots of different companies, yes. um, they're often the ones that don't even need to shout about it. Mm. And it, it does worry me a little bit that a lot of the entrepreneurs out there, um, there is this slightly kind of macho element to mm. it, whereas a lot of the people, it might be a bit more kind of, they've definitely got the skills, yeah. um, but they might not be so kind of, 
uh, they might have the same ego about it. Yes. Maybe they're not the ones that are coming to the forefront. And particularly women of colour, women in general, you know, there, there is a, a definite um, a divide, I think. You know, there's definitely a type of person that you see more frequently in the, in the entrepreneurship yes. world. And this comes through in funding as well. So women are massively underfunded compared to men. Women of colour, definitely, you know, less funding. So if you're a minority, a woman yeah. already, you are considered, yeah. even if more or less there are 50% women around, yes. but you're already considered a minority. Exactly. Then if you are from an ethnic minority, yeah. you get yeah. even less. So you have to really, really <clears throat> prove and fight harder to get that funding. However, it's also been proven that women-led businesses yeah. are more profitable. In, in in relative terms so you know it's I think they should yeah to answer the question I, I don't know if there should be more or less on, or fewer entrepreneurs yes but I just think that the mix up the mix needs to be needs to be a lot different right. and then we'd all benefit okay that's fantastic very very nice okay I have a, a question with you I guess um, I guess the answer but I want to hear it from you <laughs> okay so what is your relationship with patience in terms patience. of yes. Depends. <laughs> <laughs> I I am I am quite uh, patient in things. There was a, just back to women in business, I did read a thing or listen to a podcast the other day saying that women tend to well not tend to, but can treat their uh, the workplace in the same same way as they do as the family environment. Mm. Um, in which they're a lot more tolerant of bad behaviour um, than they should be. So I think it would have served me better over the years to be more impatient, to be honest, right. and less forgiving, right. and a bit more bullish, and a bit more patient, impatient, and a bit more, no, I'm not having that, you know. Um, but I do, sometimes I do have to kind of think, well, it, it is all right to just pause and think things through before acting, mm. because I'm so keen sometimes to say yes and go for things. Um, for example, sending off a proposal, um, we actually won a bit of work once, a big training contract, because I said to the client, I really want to get this through this afternoon, but I've got a load of meetings, so yes. I want to do it properly. Yes. So it's Monday morning now, I really can't get it to you until Wednesday. I'm, you right. know, and even though I was thinking, oh, I've got to get it, you know, otherwise I'm yeah. going to lose the work. Actually, because we didn't dash off any old thing, because I spent time thinking yes. it through, then they thought, oh, okay, well, the end product is going to be like that as well. Yeah. So I've had to learn over the years, yeah, to be more impatient, more pushy, and uh, in some areas, but then also in other areas, to think, no, you know, pausing, taking time to think things through yeah. is, is also a good thing. Great. Okay, and now another, another question that is about, uh, you know, how do you see consistency in, in work mm. and in delivering work? What is your yeah. relationship to consistency? <laughs> well, I think a lot of it is to do with processes. So we make sure that any work that goes out, somebody else in the room has always proofread it first. Right. Um, just even to give it a sense check. It's not just about looking for spelling mistakes. Yes. It's just to see, well, does this flow as a piece of work? Yes. Um, we, we have uh, feedback from the client. We have a couple of rounds of feedback if they need it. And also I have um, basic induction processes. So when anyone joins a team, I've got a, a little handbook that tells them what to expect. You know, I'm trying to build in as many processes around this as possible. Yeah. Because as we grow as a company, then, you know, how can I possibly keep on top of everything? No, of course. So, you know, it can, it can be difficult to keep things consistent. Um, so managing expectations, making sure people know as much as possible at the beginning, yes. instead of waiting for mistakes to be made, is, is the best approach. Fantastic. I always find. Fantastic. How important do you think is um, to be, a, as an entrepreneur, uh, as a freelancer as well, but an entrepreneur more than anything else, um, be able to quick thinking and quick adapting to situation coming before? Um, I think really important. Um, and so particularly when you're in a smallish company, then it allows you to be nimble yes. and you can adapt quickly. And someone can say, uh, like podcasting is, is coming in now and we've partnered up with a podcasting company mm. yes. so this is now something that we can offer I think the trick is to still maintain the thread that runs through everything for you as a company right so for us that is content yes. so that's always like everything comes back to the content absolutely so if someone says to me um, you know we want you to build our website yeah. which is a it's more technical more development then yes. I, I think no you know I know they've just said to me oh it's only a small one can you do it but I have to think yeah. no it's still not our core service no. 
Um, and so, yeah, I think it's about being adaptable, being nimble, yeah. but also thinking, well, what, what's your framework? Yes. You know, what are your pillars, if you like? What are the things that your business is built around? Otherwise, before you know it, you're doing six projects that aren't really anything to do with your core skills and nothing which keeps people in a room happy because it's, you know, it's not their, their normal work. Yes, great. So that can be the tricky thing. Great. Okay, talking about uh, routines. Uh, now, I have a, a bit of a section about routine. I'm just trying to get <laughs> a sense. So, do you have a, a daily or weekly routine within your work? Um, in, in the workplace, uh, yeah, we have a, a meeting on a Monday morning, a little catch up with everybody. Um, we have various, a lot of clients will do their reports once a month, so I suppose around the first of the month, lots of people are busy working on that. I send yeah. out invoices on the 15th for all our retainer clients, yes. rather than waiting until the last day of the month. Um, so we have various processes around that. Um, and then I manage my time through things, various tools like uh, Trello, I use mm. a lot for project management. Trello, yeah. um, a really simple thing in Gmail, Gmail tasks. So that means I can come in in the morning, have a sweep through email. That is if I haven't been naughty and checking my email out of yeah. which I do all the time on my phone. Yes. Um, and that, but I can have a sweep through the emails. Anything is like delete, delete, delete. And then that thing, I'll add it to my little task list. Mm. Um, if it's big, if there's anything small, I'll ask straight away. But but then I've got this ongoing task list which links back to the email. Yeah. So then that means there's no pressure to just you know respond to everything quickly. Yes. I can block out my time so I'll do some work and then 11 o'clock whatever then I'll go through all the emails that need properly answering. So Fantastic. it's all part of my thing about not feeling that I have to rush and do everything as soon as someone claps their hands. You know. No, of course. I, can, I need to manage my time. Absolutely. Great. Um, do you have uh, any particular morning routine for yourself? Um, well, it's changed now a bit because uh, now the boys are both at secondary school. Oh. Um, they clear off and they get on the bus at 7.40. So that's great. <laughs> Whereas previously, um, my husband and I were doing a thing where we, we kind of staggered it. So one went in early one day but came home yeah. early yeah. and then the other one the next day. Sure. So that has really changed things. And mm. the fact that I can, I don't, if I'm back late-ish, well, when I say latish, you know, half an hour after they get home, yeah. it's not a problem. No. And so that has changed things quite a lot in my work work um, routine because yes. I haven't got this ongoing thing, even just the admin around it, yeah. co coordinating with my husband, oh, he's going to be at a meeting this Tuesday, so I can't do that Tuesday and all of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's generally getting up and having some breakfast and some coffee. Yeah. Um, I do a lot of fitness as well. I like my running, I like going to the gym. Yes. So I fit all of that in around around work as well. Great. Yeah. That was my next question. So yeah. you exercise, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you look super fit all the time, so I know <laughs> that. So uh, what kind of exercise do you practice? Well, I go to a really good gym in Ely, um, which is all group training. Okay. So it's not a case that you go along and you sit there on your bike with your phone, kind yeah, of pedaling at one mile an stuff, hour. Yeah. It's uh, every session is different, so that there might be, there's quite a lot of weights with it, or stuff to do with core. Mm -hmm. and it's all quite fun, you yes. know. But then I do... I've let my running slip a little bit because I've been enjoying that so much. Um, but I've just signed up to another half marathon oh, wow. in September. So that'll be my fifth or sixth half marathon, I think. And then I did the London Marathon last... Oh, it'll be two years ago now. So I think two years, I can stop dropping it into conversation now. Wow. <laughs> Whereas when I'd just done it, I was kind of, you know, oh, did I mention that I did the London no. Marathon? <laughs> Yes. But I think now it's been two years, I think yeah, maybe I, don't, I can you stop dropping that in the conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but I do find that fitness really, really, really helps me keep on top of everything. Absolutely. You know, just more than I can say. So when I go through a good period where, yeah, I'm doing loads of fitness, um, haven't had any wine, you know, because it's quite easy to accidentally um, start drinking too much as part of business. Yes. You know, you Ooh. go for a meeting and it's in the evening, oh, let's have a glass of wine. Yes. Oh, let's... Um, I don't know, it can happen, so I try and keep a, keep an eye on that as well. Yes, it's very easy to get mm. dragged in there, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so a couple of more questions really. Um, where do you see yourself as in your business yeah. in the next three years? In three years from now, 2022 we're talking about. Oh, yeah, wow. I know, that happened. Um, oh my God. I, I really want us to, to grow a little bit more. I feel like we're not quite as big as we need to be. Mm -hmm. and 
that would, you know, I'm not thinking about Microsoft size, no. but I feel at the moment that, oh, if I just had enough work for a full-time designer, or if I just had enough for yeah. a full-time admin person. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to kind of just build things up a little bit, tighten up some of the processes, and make sure that can happen. Um, shorten the sales, uh, the length of sales so you know sometimes it can take months while I'm oh, busy yes. kind of courting a different client um, or you know sometimes they come to us and they say we're desperate to work with you but we just tied to this other agency and sometimes that whole process can take quite a long time yes. so I'm trying to shorten that yes. um, and make sure that we're making uh, bringing lots of money in I'm concerned about Brexit and the, no the knock-on effect on the economy as a whole mm -hmm. rather than the direct impact on us but the knock-on effect Yes. Um, so for me it's about steadying the ship over the next few years, making sure we've got revenue coming in from lots of different sources and then trying to grow just that little bit bigger. Fantastic. Okay, if you could give uh, someone advice, somebody who wants to start, uh, in your case, an agency, but any mm. business, so mm. what would be one piece of advice? You I think um, to build your networks, definitely. So when you're a lot smaller, then you can feel quite isolated. You know, I've had situations where I've had to take people to court. Um, I've had people going, uh, this awful thing with the Coronation Street musical, uh, which went under bankrupt and owing 400 grand. Not, not all to me, but there was a, a, a sum of money in that which I never saw again. And during that period, I felt very isolated. And I did have good networks at the time. Yes. I've grown them even more over the, year, over the years. Yes. So whereas in the early years, it was... Um, going to Cam Creative, which yes. I helped set up with Paul Smith, um, and you know, meeting other freelancers, talking about challenges and talking about successes. Mm -hmm. You know, I always came away from that feeling a bit more like, oh, this this is all right. Yes. And nowadays, I also belong to a thing called the Agency Collective, right. which is for agency owners. Yes. And people are very, people are much more kind of open um, about things than you expect them to be sometimes. Yes. And I think to build those those relationships, those networks with um, other people in the business community, mm -hmm. it really helps. Otherwise, you can feel a little bit isolated, yes. and maybe you, 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 know, you talk to your partner all day long about it, but he or she, they, they can only be supportive, they can't help you in the same way as maybe other business contacts. Yes. So, so building your networks, I think, um, is, is, really, uh, is really important. And don't, don't just wait for when business is slow. You know, the best time to go out networking is when business is booming. Because then you walk into the room, you're not holding out your baking bowl, you're not saying, oh, please work with me. You're having conversations where you say, yeah, yeah. this is brilliant, I've just got this contract. I love this. Yeah. You know? yeah. And that Fantastic. radiates enthusiasm and, you know, people want to work with successful people. Yes, yes, and positive people. Yeah, 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 exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow, this has been fascinating listening <laughs> to you. Really, really inspiring, really. I, I think <clears throat> that's all, really. I just would like to... Thank you very much for your time and your energy, which is uh, literally radiating. It's fantastic to hear <laughs> all this progress. So I can just wish you all the best for your okay. next three years. And hopefully we're going to speak again soon to celebrate some more successes. Yeah, lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.